Hey, future wealth members, subscribers, new to the channel. Thank you for joining me today. So today I have, um, I made a new purchase today. And, you know, as each day goes by, I'm learning this. I, I was, I'm a very hardcore real estate person. Um, so this whole investing in the stock market and buying stocks and learning about dividends and uh, ETFs, I've known of it. But I've never drove. I never deep dived into all this. This it's becoming more of a. Uh, I'm an analyzing everything. I'm I'm reading. I've finished three books in the last month, and I just received a new one in the in the mail. Uh, and a lot of it was coming from Warren Buffett. I, I've read Peter Lynch. So to break things down a little bit, uh, I was talking to a very uh, close relative of mine today and um he is a longtime investor himself uh he was the one that recommended me to go check out mr free at 33 and it was a very interesting story he is uh he is also a youtuber himself and uh, he also has this blog his website uh very interesting uh, i've you know, there's so many different approaches to, to building wealth, to being financially free. So in regards to this, and this will also be in the link in my description, he is a very intense dividend um, person, meaning <laughs> he buys a lot of stocks with high dividends or, you know, with, with, with good, uh, good companies. And his, his YouTube page explains all that. I will link it. Uh, very awesome, um, Jason. He, he's uh, and you know I made a, a comment on his site on his YouTube page as well. I joined him. A lot of awesome information that got me thinking, um, and and of course that motivates me all the time when someone starts speaking and, and they know what they're talking about. Unlike myself, right? I'm just learning. I'm here. I'm hoping you guys can join me at the same time. Correct me because I'm sure a lot of guys who, when you guys see me and my videos, they're gonna be like, "What's this guy talking about?" Let me let me chime in and and um, correct what he's saying. So here's what I did today. Uh, after you know doing some more research, I took my my awesome little intrinsic value calculator on my Excel spreadsheet. I said, hmm, let me consider some of these stock picks, uh, some of these individuals, uh, you know, even with Jason, what he recommended, and I, and I put it into this uh, spreadsheet. So today I worked on, let's see what I had on. Ignore the, well, I read did Apple again, so let me fix that date. It's the 19th, so today is the 19th. Um, and then, of course, Verizon, AMD, I did the other day. So I took Cisco, Pepsi, and Apple. And I did their intrinsic value. And you can see Cisco came in uh, not too, I mean, not bad. It's, you know, current price is 46. The, the intrinsic value is at 53.77. So that's a good buy. Um, Jason also mentioned that Pepsi was a good buy, maybe at the time of his recording. But as of today... Um, I think the 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 current the current price that he had in one of his videos was a little lower than what it is today. So obviously it went up, and um, that caused the opposite effect of it went overvalued. But I mean it's it's only at like six point four six percent downside. So that's not a buy in based on this formula. Uh, of course, if you anticipate it being a good buy and there's other factors besides this right i'm just going by this right now uh, apple today was a good price as well because it was below the intrinsic value of 132 i actually bought at that price 130 um 129 uh, a few weeks back so it went as high as 135 or so so that caused it you know that little little percentage caused it to go back and forth between a buyer or a sell. Um, but but what did I end up doing? So I ended up doing is I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't. I as much as I tried to look and see, 
I went back to my roots because I have had already had purchased Coca-Cola, right? I added an additional 20 shares to my existing uh, today. So not much. It was like a little over a thousand. And, you know, that puts me in the position of I have 40 shares with Coca-Cola now. And the um, so this this was one of the existing high higher dividend uh, stocks that I have at that 3.23 I ended up going to do a calculator uh, and I googled a few of them there's a whole bunch of dividend stock calculators I want to um, I'm gonna see I just don't know how accurate some of these are so I tried to find the one that looked like the most user-friendly um, calculating okay so let's let's see let's see if this ticker is ko uh, starting amount I have is 2,000. Oops, not, I wish I had 20,000. Start date, uh, no, I didn't have it that long. So start date is, can we predict the future? I don't think I could predict the future. Um, maybe. Oh, I can. Okay. Uh, let's go 222. Let's go for... Uh, 221, sorry, 221, 10 years into it. No, we're in 221 right now. Sorry about that. 221, what, what am I talking about? We're in 221 right now. I was starting from the past, going into the future. All right, we're in 221. And let's, does that allow me to go to 231? 231. Okay. Yes, it does. All right, so exactly. 10 years from today, calculate return. I, I don't know. I mean, this this one looks a lot simpler than the other ones. Uh, total return, dividend, reinvestment. Okay, it's, it's doing its thing. I don't know. Is it going to load? I hope it loads. Come on, load. Max. I'm looking at the Coca-Cola stocks. Earning dates. April 19th. It's taking kind of long. Simple doesn't always mean better, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll come back to that or I'll open up another one. But in short, this whole dividend concept got me thinking and I was like, oh, maybe I should buy more, buy more um, stocks with dividend, higher dividend yields. Uh, it makes sense. You reinvest that into your portfolio. Um, but I, one thing I don't understand is if if it benefits me, obviously it would benefit me more if I put it into a um, like a Roth into my Roth. Uh, so that way, any of the dividends that I accrue through the, the course of the years, I wouldn't have to pay taxes on that until obviously unless I sell it. Um, but in regards to my taxable account, uh, as these dividends come each year, I actually have to pay taxes on it. So I'm not sure how that portion of it works. I'm, I'm still trying to understand it fully myself. Um, but hey, I taxing me on a dollar is better than not taxing me on, you know, taxing me on zero, right? I have, if I don't, I'm not making anything, then it's not, I'm not benefiting myself either. But um, I'd rather be in the plus and be taxed than, than anything, right? So I have to look into how that all works or, or where the, the tax bracket or how I fall into the tax bracket um, because you have to, I guess you have to balance between are you actually making the f like with the extra dividend or are you going to end up paying more in taxes that it, it kind of washes out right so um, that's what I have to try and figure out so this one this calculator is not lo loading dividend stock calculator I don't know why uh I wish there was a nicer one that I knew about how to get one. And okay, let's try this one. This one looks okay. Okay, so I have 40 shares, dividend yield right now. Let's bring this over. Let's not deal with that. Dividend yield is 3.23. 3 okay, 3.23. 
dividend growth an annually? I don't know. What's the difference for dividend? I'm actually looking over here. So for, I don't know what that is. Dividend growth annually and dividend yield. Dividend growth an annually. Can I just put zero? Because I have no idea what that would be. Beginning stock price, 5029. Let's try 5029. That's what the current price is right now. Stock price growth rate annually. So I could either do the five year or I can actually do the next year. It says next year is 8.4. But then it's going to be 8.4. Let's average out, I guess, 5.24. 5.24 for the next 10 years. Is it calculating? I have no idea. What the hell did it do? It didn't do anything. Definition. Oh, oh, it's right here in the bottom. The total return is 103%, giving an annual return of 7.3. The total accumulated dollar due to dividend is $745. Accumulated principal is 3340 So my current 40 shares at a... If I don't put any more into it and it sits at a 3.2% dividend and no annual growth whatsoever on this stock and the beginning price of the existing price, which is $50.30 and the stock price growth rate annually is 5.2%. I don't know how is that different from the dividend growth. Oh, the dividend. Okay. So let's just say the dividend doesn't even change. It's just the stock price growth rate goes up each year-ish, about 5.2%. For the next 10 years, I would make $745 just from dividends. Um, and then my 40 share of what's $2,000 now would become 3340 well, when I say 2,000, I'm rounding it up. I'm rounding it off. Uh, it's a little more than that. So, uh, yeah. So that's what it would be. Um, so obviously, if you put more into it, you would get more in return. And then if you have multiple stocks that are doing dividends, you're accruing even more each year. Um, and I'm going to test that out. I'm going to start investing in more higher dividend uh, stable companies, not just any company that has high dividends, but you know is on the brink of going bankrupt or you know losing customers or revenue. Um, I would not only look for the dividend, high dividend paying stocks. I will also do the homework of using Warren's um, analysis to figure out how much debt they're in and how much income they're you know making and, and their profit margins and that's it i think that's what i will start doing um thank you guys for joining me now of course if i have anything that i said that was confusing and you thought i said wrong i'm going to review this let me know in the comments below and i can definitely square that away and make sure i'll never do that again uh, thank you guys appreciate it bye